Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on the cardiovascular system. In this video, we're going to talk about pulmonary arterial hypertension. So hypertension of the pulmonary arterials, arteries. So pulmonary arterial hypertension is the topic for this video. So the way I'm going to structure this is firstly, we're going to talk about the uh, pathophysiology, which is uh, which involves uh, nitric oxide and uh, soluble guanylate cyclase a lot. So we're going to look at that. And uh, what's well, thought to at least, it's not of a particularly well understood uh, disease. Uh, then what we're going to look at is a new drug, which is a soluble guanylate cyclase activator, which is known as Rio Ciguat. Uh, and we're going to look at how that works. Okay, so this is pulmonary artery, arterial hypertension, and it's usually abbreviated to PAH. Okay, right. So, let's have a look at how pulmonary arterial hypertension, um, well, firstly, how it uh, comes to be. Right, so, let's draw a picture of the heart. Uh, so, uh, we'll draw the physiologist's picture. We won't draw the anatomist's picture. So, here is the uh, right atrium. Let's say uh, this here is the right ventricle here with the, um, the um, uh, pulmonary trunk coming out of there. Then we have uh, the um, left atrium over here, okay, and the left ventricle here, okay, and then the aorta coming out there. So this blood vessel here is the aorta. And importantly for us, this blood vessel here, this is the pulmonary trunk, okay? Pulmonary trunk. And I've drawn this a little bit um, too high up so that I can't actually fit in the structure that I want to show now. Right, so I'll try my best anyway. What happens is that the pulmonary trunk bifurcates into two. So it splits into two like so. It splits into the uh, right pulmonary artery and the left pulmonary artery, which go to each lung, basically. So let's draw the left pulmonary artery coming over into the left lung. And this is a bit of an exaggerated diagram, just because um, this is a physiologist's picture, not an anatomist's picture. So here's the left lung over here, completely out of scale compared to the heart. So this represents the left lung. Okay. And the left pulmonary artery here is going to go into the left lung, more around this sort of area rather than up there. And then out of the, um, uh, the left lung is going to come two pulmonary veins, which are going to go back into uh, the um, left atrium here. So what's going to happen is this um, left pulmonary artery is going to split into loads of other blood vessels, like so. And those are going to split up even more, so let's draw them splitting up even more, and then they'll all rejoin back together, and then they'll form these pulmonary veins coming out like this. Okay, so here's the other one. Of course, it'll bifurcate a lot more than this, but this is just a physiological picture to highlight the essential principles. Okay, right, so blood goes in from uh, the uh, right ventricle into the pulmonary trunk, into the left pulmonary artery, then round out through the two left pulmonary veins here and into the left atrium. So let's just uh, label everything up. So these are the left pulmonary veins. Pulmonary veins. And in fact, I think I'll colour in bits of this picture. So let's have the left pulmonary veins in blue. Here. Oh, actually, no. Well, this is the interesting thing. Even though they are a vein, they are actually going to be carrying oxygenated blood. So we should have them in red. So here comes the oxygenated blood back from the lungs, basically. Okay? And then the blood going to the lungs uh, in this left, uh, this left pulmonary artery here should be in blue. So the pulmonary artery is the only artery that's carrying deoxygenated blood. So we'll color it in blue. And then the blood will become oxygenated when it is it passes through the pulmonary capillaries. Right, okay, so uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension means that the blood pressure of the blood in this pulmonary arteries is too high. 
basically. So what is blood pressure? Well, basically, it's how much the blood is pushing on the side of the blood vessel and trying to get out. So basically, um, if you imagine a balloon, uh, then the blood vessel is like the out the plastic of the balloon, and the air inside is like um, the air. Well, it's like the blood. Sorry, <laughs> it's like the blood. Then the blood or the air inside the balloon is trying to push, is pushing against the wall of the balloon. That's what causes the balloon to expand when you blow it up because the air inside is pushing against the wall of the balloon. Similarly, the uh, blood inside the wall, inside the artery, is pushing against the sides of the artery. It's blowing it up just like a balloon, effectively. Now, it doesn't blow it up that much because these arteries aren't nearly as elastic as a balloon, but they do have a certain degree of elasticity, so they'll be blown up a certain amount. And the amount that the uh, blood is pushing against the wall of the artery, basically, that is what is meant by the blood pressure. So basically, if you have pulmonary arterial hypertension, it means that the blood is pushing too hard against the outside of these blood vessels. So you're in danger, effectively. You might imagine that you're in danger of what happens to a balloon if you try and put too much air in. Well, that means that the pressure of the air pushing against the balloon gets too high and the balloon bursts. You're at risk of rupture, you can imagine. Now. And what causes this? Why is the blood uh, pushing too hard against the wall of the artery? Well, how, if we go back to our balloon analogy, how would you make the air inside the balloon push against the wall of the balloon too hard? And I'll give you a clue. If the air is pushing against the walls of the balloon too hard, the balloon will pop. So how would you make a balloon pop? Well, one way would be to sit on it. If you sit on the balloon, it will pop. And the reason is that you're compressing the balloon. If you squash the balloon, if you force the air to adopt a smaller volume, then the air is going to push against the wall of the balloon harder, and that can lead to the uh, bursting of the balloon. So, if you put, if you contracted the blood vessel, basically, so that the same volume of blood is going to exist in a smaller volume space, then the blood will push against the wall of the artery harder, basically, and that is indeed what's happening. Because the heart, the heart is going to pump a certain amount of blood into the pulmonary artery each time. If you contract all of these blood vessels, then all of that blood is going to be forced into a smaller volume, and it's not going to like that. It's going to push against the wall of that blood vessel harder, basically. And that's what happens in, well, what's believed to happen in pulmonary arterial hypertension. For some reason, the blood vessels start contracting too much. They're, they're, the lumen of the blood vessels is too narrow, basically. These blood vessels narrow and are permanently narrowed. And that means you have more blood, or you have the same amount of blood in a smaller space, basically. And that's going to mean that the blood pushes against the wall of these arteries too hard. And that's what causes pulmonary arterial hypertension. Now, why? Why do these blood vessels adopt this too small conformation? Well, basically, it has everything to do, well, it's thought to have everything to do with nitric oxide. Okay, so let's draw a picture of our blood vessel, a cross-section of our blood vessel here. So here's our, let's say, our left pulmonary artery here. Okay, and let's say this is the lumen of the left pulmonary artery. And then right uh, in the center, what you have is these endothelial cells which line the lumen of the blood vessel. So these are our endothelial cells lining the lumen of our blood vessel, okay? So here they are, and they all sit on a basement membrane, which I'll show in turquoise in a moment. So here are our endothelial cells aligning the lumen of our blood vessel, and then underneath our endothelial cells we have this basement membrane of collagen uh, on which these um, endothelial cells are sitting, basically. Okay, so here is our endothelial cells sitting on a basement membrane of collagen, and the basement membrane of collagen along with this layer of endothelial cells it then is then known as tunica intima.
of the blood vessel. So tunica means layer, intima means close. So uh, this is the layer that is close to the blood, because the blood is in here, basically. This is the blood in the lumen of the blood vessel. Right, so uh, that's the tunica intima of our blood vessel. And I'll just colour in these endothelial cells in this yellow colour here. So these are our endothelial cells of the tunica intima of our blood vessel in yellow. Okay, right. And then surrounding this basement membrane, you then have tunica media. So the next layer is a layer known as tunica media. Okay, so this is a layer peripheral to the tunica intima. And this layer consists of circularly arranged smooth muscle cells. So let me show these. So here's a smooth muscle cell, and then you'll have more smooth muscle cells here. And they basically form these circular loops of smooth muscle cells, which are wrapped around uh, the lumen of the blood vessel. So they are circum, um, they're, circ uh, they're circularly oriented. Okay. So there is our circle of smooth muscle cells that um, surround our uh, tunica intima. And this next layer, this layer of smooth muscle cells here, which I'll highlight the boundaries of in red. Here, and then here's the boundary, the inner boundary here. Okay, so that that layer there is now the tunica media. So this is tunica media. Okay, and then the layer outside of tunica media is then a layer consisting of connective tissue, and this is what's known as tunica adventitia. Okay, so tunica adventitia. Right. Okay. So that those are the layers of the blood vessel. Now um, we've been studying uh, endothelial derived relaxation factor or nitric oxide, which is this m small molecule released by these endothelial cells and which diffuses to the smooth muscle cells and causes them to relax, basically. Now, in pulmonary arterial hypertension, what is believed to happen is the endothelial cells undergo some sort of dysfunction, which means that they stop producing nitric oxide. So less, well, they don't stop producing it completely, but they produce too little nitric oxide, basically. So all the endothelial cells of the, uh, that line every blood vessel in the body are producing a certain turnover level of nitric oxide all the time. Now, what is believed to happen in pulmonary arterial hypertension is that these endothelial cells in the pulmonary arteries, or, yes, the pulmonary arteries, uh, produce less nitric oxide, so they start producing less. Now, if less nitric oxide comes to these smooth muscle cells, then you're going to get less relaxation. And we'll just go over quickly the pathway by which nitric oxide produces relaxation. And therefore, if you reduce the amount of nitric oxide, why that, produces, why that causes uh, over-contraction of the smooth muscle cells. But we'll do that in the next video.